Hello CLAT aspirants, so we are beginning with our new series, we have already started with it and this is just to build a platform for the students who are the beginners of reading. This is full and loaded with vocabulary and it will act as a panacea for all those students who feel that English is not their cup of tea. You start reading from the initial stage, the short stories, I had taken earlier a short story for you and this is the second one, The Model Millionaire by Oscar Wilde. And this is the second one by an Indian writer Mulkraj Anand. Mulkraj Anand needs no introduction from me. He has been famous as to write for the third rate and the downtrodden. He has written the famous novels Untouchable, Kuli, which came in and talked about the proletarian society. Yes, the poor section, the deprived section and the section which has not been paid heed by the Indian society. Let us begin with today's story. Yes, waiting quickly that is the gold watch. What is this gold watch and what does it refer to? Let us begin. This is a story as I said by Mulkraj Anand, one of the, you know what was Mulkraj Anand called as? Yes, he was called the Charles Dickens of India, a social reformer, a person who was loaded with, you know, that zest and enthusiasm, the zeal and the passion to do something for the betterment of India. So that India is free from the clutches of Britishers and we are again standing in the front rank position. So this is a story, let us begin with the story here. This is a story of a person whose name is Surujit Sudarshan Sharma. See here we have the name of the protagonist Sridhi Sudarshan Sharma and this person is the person who is the protagonist to the story. He is a kind of very poor guy, he works in a dispatch company. The dispatch company, I am giving you the gist of it, the dispatch company is Henry King and Company and his boss is Mr. Acton. Mr. Acton comes to his table and makes an announcement, I have brought something for you. You know anybody makes this kind of an announcement that I have brought something for you from England, from London. Oh my God, what will be your feelings? You will be on cloud nine and that was he felt but then there was a back of his mind he rewind everything and he felt yes there is something behind it and what is that something behind it that why is this person Mr. Acton saying so. Mr. Acton has brought something for him. There are 25 people working in the distribution department of the great Marmid empire of Henry King and company. Why he is the only person chosen, see it is loaded with vocabulary worth reading, do pause it and do read it. So why is he the only person chosen as it and inside he was just revolving around those things and thinking why is he the man who has been thought about it. Mr. Acton was a very diplomat businessman, he knew how to handle things and he knew very, very well that how to, you know, take the best out of a person. He was, his marriage himself had been, it's, his marriage was a failure and uh, his wife had returned back to her native town that is England without their getting divorced also because he was so much busy in you know in the progress of Henry King and company. Now we find that Mr. Acton has come to his table, she, he has smiled, was enough to give him the cause for thought. He was just thinking why this person brought a gift for him and what is the gift. Then he suddenly the idea cracked in his mind, you know suddenly flashed if I would say in his mind that why is he singled out of the whole distribution department company. It is only because of one thing that yes he has got 5 more years of work, what more he can give to Mr. Acton, he has nothing else to give. So that is why although the sahib has been reprimanding him, rebuking him and uh, doing many things but then he just felt that he wants him to retire 5 years before his service, right. This was a great pain for him. Why was it a great pain for him? Because he belonged to a low middle class, he had no source of income. How will the family run? The question, you know, the turmoil hanging in his mind. His son has not done matriculation and who will take care of the family household expenses? This thing was hanging on his mind and he did not know what to do next. So, at that time, the things were moving on and we find that the clockwork company of that 
work of the Henry King and company had hypnotized him. We also find an introduction of a funny character that is this lady who is snub nosed. Who is this lady? This is the Anglo Indian typist and this Anglo Indian typist came to him and asked what did she say to him that these there are so beautiful things in London. Why my she took a half day's leave imagine that is half day's leave. Why is she coming and doing all this? Miss Violet Dixon. This is a humorous character introduced. She is actually an Anglo Indian. She loves England, she wants and she relishes to go back to England, but the problem is that she has been left here in India and so she takes a half day's leave just to enjoy those beautiful days of England, just to remember them and daydream about them. Now he was not interested in the typist, the typist liked him Russ because he was a very uh, you know saintly person, a person whom with whom she felt very safe with. and. He was just those things, you know, imagine the person's condition when he's just re thinking, rethinking, he's in his brown study, he's in a reverie, recollecting that what he can offer to his boss. And then the idea has finally done that this ambivalent smile has a reason and this ambivalent smile has a reason five years retirement before his job. What could he do further? So, he thought of going back to the boss and asking him what has he brought for him and why has he brought for him something from London. Suji so, Sharma stared at her blankly and uh, looked into her physical forms and she was also very conscious about it. She pretended that it was like as if she was so busy in all those things of London. Then <coughs> the Brahmin in him woke up for an Indian all ladies except one's mother and wife are all sisters right. So, he could not even have a you know kind of licentious look over her, no amorous looks because he is a married person, he has lived his grahast portion of life and he has to enter his vanaprast that is the time of devotion, the time of sacrifice and the time of social service. Now, Actin Sahib had not gone, he went to the uh, you know the peon and he asked him has the Sahib left and the peon answered in the same you know the Anglophiles Indians do that is half in the half English, Abhi Sahib in the lift going down you know what a funny thing either you speak English or you speak Hindi but a mixture is what Indians love the sorted language. So and he went there he was sweating like anything, he went he was breathless, he was just one wondering he does not fall on that marble polished floor and he was just thinking that Sahib does not like you know to be talked about anything after the office, but then still he did that. Mr. Acton's the uniform Durban opened the bioc the car and Sahib was just sitting when he just came there. Then what happened further? By now the driver had set everything set out and at that time when he was doing that, that was his chance, he went to the window, see the way he is talking to as if putting his thrust in the head of the car and asking Sahib what you have brought for me and the Sahib so lovingly answered, I brought a gold watch for you with an inscription on it, see me on Monday morning. Okay. Now, he has answered him that he has brought a gold watch for him and now this much, this kind of answer was enough to answer him that yes, he wanted this person that is Siruji Sudarshan Sharma to retire 5 years before his service. He has given his conclusion, see we have an assumption, we have an inference and we have a conclusion the Sahib wanted him to retire. Now, the things are going on in his mind and he is just thinking over it again and again and he passed through the Victoria terminus, he went to Thane where he lived, it was a very you know crowded locality. The reason he was living there was away from uh, Mumbai was that this was a cheap accommodation he could afford with his salary. So, thinking in his 
heart and he's just trying to think that what he will say to his wife what he will say to his son and he was just thinking of that suddenly he tries to calm himself he's the bread earner of the family see the pain see the pathos see the pathetic situation the wretched sirujit sudarshan sharma the equanimity the balance of mind the sang freud attitude yes the sang freud attitude the he says to himself shanti 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 yes you have to keep your balance of mind this composure is required he can't just lose his balance of mind and he went there he went to his home he his wife was illiterate but she understood there is some tension in his mind he went to the uh, circus he his wife prepared a gala meal for him the rice kachri and he didn't enjoy it the son came to him and asked and the wife was already knowing it so he answered in the same zigzag sang freud manner that the saheb has brought something for me from vilayat no the words the indian context that has been given the indian milieu and environment i've tried to build if you have seen the paper of elit and clat we had this indian milieu and environment in it so saheb had brought something for me and that is a gold watch as soon as his son hari heard this papa you have to give me your silver watch then he said okay i'll give you that because what will i do with two watches i don't need two watches now but his wife understood that he's in great tension so she answered that let papa have this his own gold watch and then you can have it monday he went to his office and he prepared the speech in his mind he'll say to the boss that i have five more years of retirement you can't retire me earlier but no he couldn't speak a single word the boss called him in the cabin in his chamber and and gave him this gold watch his eyes were filled with tears his throat was choked imagine the pathetic situation and he tried to hold the gold watch but it slipped out of his mind and it fell on the ground something delicate part was broken maybe and the boss was very angry but he calmed himself and offered him again the gold watch see there's an inscription on it and see we give, will give you one month uh, the provident fund and things and everything as if he was behaving in a very philanthropic manner the watch passed from person to person in the office each person looked at the watch see the confusion see the talk see the chaos and see the you know the gossips going on in the uh, in the office and finally he looked at the watch and when he looked at the watch he found that the watch was not you know actually ticking it was not producing any sound what happened to the watch he was wondering what happened to the watch he just think thought suddenly he realized maybe when the watch fell from his hand it must have been broken inside he thought of going to get it repaired from someone he thought of getting it repaired because that will be the things that will be required now for the watch to be done suddenly he realized he has to get the watch repaired does he need a watch has he got to go to an office every day no he has to go to his hometown chalandar and settle there his native town in his sweet shop and what has a person who doesn't have to go to the office to do with a watch the sadness which is underlying the story is so touchy you know that melancholic touch is wonderfully brought out when he says that i have to save my money and i cannot waste money on mending the watch because he just have this gold watch as a treasure to cherish in difficult times the tight corners and this is what the story ends in that he has no appointments so he doesn't need the watch the watch is not required by him and the gold watch is just a treasure for him from henry king and company right i hope you enjoyed the story do write up your comments and do tell us what was your response you understood the indian milieu was really created or not did you enjoy the story eagerly waiting for your response right students thank you